Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at SC12 at the NVIDIA booth, and I'm here with Buddy Bland from Oak Ridge National Labs. Welcome, Buddy. Thanks. Okay, so let, let's start at the beginning for folks that might not know. Who is Oak Ridge and who do you help? Oak Ridge National Laboratory is the U.S. Department of Energy's largest open science laboratory. We do research into all kinds of energy technology, and the Department of Energy is actually the largest funder of basic research in the United States in the physical sciences. Well, this is great. So, you know, you guys had a big announcement this week, the number one supercomputer in the world, the Titan Supercomputer. You know, what was that like when you saw those LINPAC numbers? I mean, uh, how did that feel? <laughs> well, it's always gratifying to be number one. Uh, Jaguar was number one three years ago. Uh, this year, uh, Titan is able to be number one. Titan is actually an upgrade of Jaguar, so we're reusing the same cabinets. Maybe that's the first time that's ever happened on the top 500 list. But the, it, it's really gratifying to, to see that because the team has worked hard. But of course, we don't buy these machines to run uh, Linpack benchmarks. We really use the Linpack benchmarks as a way of testing the machine and shaking out problems before we turn it over to our scientists. And so what's really gratifying about it is that we'll have the number one machine in the world for doing science. That's great. So I did want to ask about the Linpack because this thing is accelerated by uh, the uh, Kepler, the K20X machines. I'm wondering, do you know how, how, how much of the flops of that performance, that number one benchmark, came from the accelerator part and, and which part from the CPUs? Well, as you say, each node has a, an AMD Opteron processor as well as an NVIDIA K20X uh, GPU. On the Linpack benchmark, we actually ran the entire thing on the Kepler K20X. So the Opteron processor was really kind of in controller mode. It was managing the communications among all the nodes, but it wasn't really part of the calculation itself. So with this massive capability, 17.8 petaflops, something like that? 17.59. Okay, so, so what can that do for real science? Well, for science, it's really terrific. What, what it does is it gives us the ability to add resolution to our modeling and simulation of the world. If you look at the, the big supercomputer, we like to think of Titan as a time machine. It lets us look into the future with modeling and simulation and figure out what's going to happen with climate, model, uh, climate change and uh, look into the future and try and figure out how do we build new materials out of uh, nanotubes or carbon fiber to lower the weight of cars and improve their fuel economy? So Titan really gives us the ability to, like I said, look into the future. So with the original Jaguar machine, that was not an accelerated machine, correct? Correct. It right. was all Opteron processors. So when you started planning this, was, was there some risk involved? Like, you know, would the applications work? Would they scale? I mean, what was that like? Of course, there's always risk. Uh, we are a leadership computing facility for the U.S. Department of Energy. As such, we are expected to take risk. Not, not huge risk, but we are expected to, to look for new ways to accomplish our mission at lower power, at higher performance per dollar. And the, the K20 Kepler uh, really gave us a, a huge win on the power. Uh, we were able to get a 10 times improvement on our Linpack score versus what we got with Jaguar three years ago for only 19% more power. So that's a big win. And that carries over to the many of the applications also. We will see uh, a big improvement in the performance with only a minor increase in the total power that's being used. And we have to do that as we're going to the exascale machines that we hope to get in the future. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I have to ask you, what's next for Titan in, in the future? What comes after this? What's going on? Well, Titan is just now going through its acceptance testing. So what I hope is next for Titan is four or five years of good productive work on science. Yeah. But uh, I will say that just two weeks ago, I was in Chicago meeting with uh, some of my colleagues uh, from Argonne, Oak Ridge, and Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. We're all planning uh, the successors to Sequoia, Mira, and Titan for 2016-27 timeframe, and we're already working on the, the specifications for the, for the next big machine.